Hi, welcome to my kitchen. So good to be here again. I need cooking therapy. Besides shopping, it's my favorite thing to do. Well, I should reverse it. I think I like cooking more. But anyway, today what we're going to have is something called Babette's Carnitas. I do not know who Babette is. Um, I've never known anybody named Babette. We did have a poodle named Babette when I was growing up. And I think she lived for 22 years. She was a much-loved member of our family. But I can assure you this wasn't Babette's recipe, but she would have loved to nibble. So I typically make this with a beef roast, but I did not have a beef roast in the freezer. And I had gone to the store yesterday, and they had these giant pork butt roasts on sale. I cut this one in half. And I thought, I'm just going to make me some pork carnitas. They're going to be really, really good. Too. Oh, the sun just went behind a cloud. Um, it was so nice and pretty and bright a minute ago. Anyway, these are super simple to make, and they're so good. I know you're going to enjoy it. My family has enjoyed this for years, years and years and years. And it's a, it's a Mexican dish that you eat on tortillas. Tortillas, yummy. So good, so simple. So I washed this off. I had to peel a layer of fat off the top. I had a big layer of the fat on there and I left a little of the fat on there because that's gonna drip down to the bottom of the pan. All you do is mix together some very simple ingredients. So you should have a three or four pound pork or beef roast. I typically use a beef chuck, chuck roast, but today we're gonna use a Boston butt. And, and you want seven ounce can of chopped green chilies. I have this, so I'm only going to use one can. Look how I mangled the lid. I always have so much trouble getting into cans. I don't know why. So annoying. Probably because I don't use an electric can opener. I don't like them. I like most of my utensils to be um, manual. So, then we're going to put two or we're going to put you were using one tablespoon of chili powder i remember we're having this one tablespoon coming right up <coughs> okay so this powder doesn't smell all that good when it's raw i like cumin better and we are going to use it says a half a teaspoon of cumin uh -uh, that's not enough that's not enough. We'd have to fork that. I like cumin too much. So let's just go ahead and use the whole half. And that way I'm getting a fourth of a teaspoon more and make it heaping at that. I don't know what it is about cumin. I love it. I love lots of it in my chili and not as much chili powder. And we're going to put, I've got some Mexican oregano. I just love it the best. It also calls for a half a teaspoon. It would want a fourth. Yeah, we're going to put a half. I like herbs. I like things herby. So I've got mine right there. Half a teaspoon. I don't really know the difference between Mexican oregano and um, regular oregano, but I do know that it sure does smell good. And then we're going to put one clove of garlic mince. So they would want half a clove. <laughs> Not happening. We're going to put probably two cloves oh yeah no that was just me Finn I wasn't nobody knocking and let's see we want some salt and pepper to taste that's all there is to this so let's put a little bit of salt and pepper don't sneeze you guys will think I have the COVID some salt there we go let's stir it together You'd be shocked to have just these simple little ingredients taste so good when they cook onto the roast. So then what you do, I've got the uh, little My Boston butt, ooh, I just said butt, sitting on, in a pan, on some foil paper. So you just want to put your mix that you've just mixed up with all your delicious smelling, I want a spoon all your delicious smelling ingredients 
And I tell you, it smells delicious. I think it's those chili peppers, those green chilies. Mm, they smell good. They're not hot either. So don't worry about that. And then you just want to rub this all over your meat. And um, the girls love this. And so do I. Look at that. And we're going to wrap it completely and tightly in foil. Because we want this to just be staying on the meat. So that it will just season every little bite. And it will run down to the bottom. That is acceptable to me. I'm not going to touch this thing. I've already washed my hands five times to get the pork juice off of me. Okay, so now what we're going to do is carefully wrap it. Isn't that a beautiful, rich color? And I mean tightly as you can get it. I always like to buy these little sheets of foil that are already cut at those big stores where you can buy in bulk, whichever one you choose to use. Uh-oh. A yellow sneeze coming on. Hmm. Oh, thank you. I think it's going to go away. Look at that. Now, some of that juice will still get out and seep all around the roast, and that's good. Because later on, when this is done, we're going to shred it up and have it in the liquid, its own liquid that it creates. I'm not adding any liquid at all. It's going to be all of its own. I think that's called jus, au jus. Not positive, but I believe that's what it's called. So now, for Miss Babette's carnitas, we are going to pop it in the oven, 300 degrees, and we're gonna go three or four hours. And then we're gonna shred it real good, and we're going to put it in our tortilla with our favorite toppings, and I'll show you that. So I'll see you in three or four hours. Well, it's been three and a half hours, so I'm going to go check and see how it's looking. Hold on a minute. Okay, I got it out of the oven. It's very hot. Let's open her up. Looks like Jiffy Pop. Mmm. Mm-mm-mm. Smells good, too. Give us a little fork and see if it tears apart easy. If it doesn't, it'll go back in the oven for another hour. That was a bone right there. Let's see. No, I want it to go in for another hour. It's got to be falling apart. And it is going to be worth the wait. If only we had smell of it. Okay, it's finally done after four and a half hours. Put all this good juice it made too. I'm going to shred it up and put it in there. Okay, it's time to assemble one of these delicious carnitas. Let's get started. So what you want to do is crisp these carnitas up. And so I've put some oil in a cast iron skillet. Getting it hot. because we're gonna crisp this carnita meat up. You can eat it, not crispy, but it's really good crispy. Just pull it out as you need it and throw it on a hot skillet. Oh, the dog's over there licking something. He's loud. Okay, so my pan is smoking hot. So I'm gonna throw my meat on there. And I'm just going to allow it to sit for a minute. I think I'll give it a little salt and pepper. Because I want to crisp up that bottom. And it takes a little time to do this. You could, you know, put it on a big pan that you want to spray with some oil and put it under your broil broiler, like I said. But you're going to be pulling this out. I made a lot of meat, and you're going to be pulling it out of the refrigerator for a couple of days by the handful to make you one of these. And this is how you will do it. Let's let that sit for a minute. Okay, you hear it popping, it's hot. And I've got a lot of crispy pieces of meat there. And so I don't want to get overcook it while it's tough. So I'm going to go ahead and stop and assemble my delicious carnita. 
so I'm going to put a little bit of sour cream because I love the flavor of sour cream. And I'm going to do some, actually I think I'll squeeze a little bit of lime on my meat. Because I love the acid. And I'm going to put some of this delicious sweet and spicy salsa. It is made with hatch chilies and jalapenos and cilantro and jalapenos and lime juice and sugar and green and red bell peppers. Just put on here whatever you like. Like you can put um, some more jalapenos, you can put red salsa, you can put um, guacamole, tomatoes, lettuce, whatever makes you happy. Refried beans. I'm going to put a bunch of onions on there because I love onions. And you got to have good cheese, one with a good flavor. This is a good sharp cheddar that my husband bought. And let's see, what am I missing? Anything? Okay, I think I've got my sour cream, my onions, my salsa, my cheese, my lime. I'm happy. Okay. I'm going to roll this up. These tear, so you have to be careful. My husband bought these giant ones. I typically buy the smaller ones, but... Whatever makes him happy. Let's cut this in half. So it is manageable. Oh yeah, yummy. Let me give this delicious piece a try. Mmm. That crispy meat makes it. But you've got to crisp your meat. Just so good. That good cheese and that salsa. The soft tortilla. Can't go wrong with these. Pork, beef, whatever you like best. I bet you could do chicken. Yum. We'll be eating on these for a couple days. And I hope that you take the time out to make Babette's car carnitas because, like I said, these are a family favorite for years and years. So I hope everybody has a wonderful day, and we will cook together again real soon. Bye for now.